So I just found some sticks and I'm going to take them home to try out this technique called willowing. So I now have a spinning wheel and I've made combs before for processing the wool. And there's a saying that it used to take a whole bunch of spinners to keep one weaver busy. In other words, spinning was a choke point where uh, you needed to put way more time there than you had to do in weaving, because weaving's relatively fast, but I mean, it takes a long time to get enough spun thread to like do any weaving. Well, there's a choke point before spinning too, and that's in processing the wool to get it ready to spin. And right now, the way I'm doing that is taking way too long. And it uses nails, which are made of iron. And we've been spinning as a species for longer than we've been making iron. And so I really wonder if I could find an efficient way to do things that didn't involve the combs. And so I did some research and I found out a little bit about this technique that's called willowing, which is where you basically whack it a whole bunch with sticks to fluff it up. And that gets some of the vegetable matter out of the wool and also gets it ready to spin a little bit more. And they do something similar in India with a bow. And so, I mean, as in like a bow and arrow bow, not like a bow that you tie your hair with. But I've got some thin sticks here and I'm gonna take some of those home and give it a try. So the idea here is to process wool to get it ready for spinning. And up to this point, I've done that mostly with these. These things look like weapons uh, for hand-to-hand -hand combat, but really they're just for processing wool. And the way they work is they pass the wool from one comb to the other repeatedly until the fibers are straightened out. And then you're able to pull the fibers off into this long, roving-esque sliver, which is very, very easy to spin. And so you spin from that. One thing about these combs, though, is that they produce a lot of waste. When I pass the wool back and forth from comb to comb, there's always just a little bit of wool left. And it's the small bits and the, the less ideal wool. This tends to sort out the long stuff, and then that gets pulled out separately. And it ends up looking like this, just in a mass. I've been collecting a lot of this stuff. And I'm wondering if this technique with woolying with the sticks might be able to turn this into something useful. If it works, then great. But first things first, I need to sweep this patch of cement so that when I start woolying, I'll be making the wool less dirty and not more dirty. Let's get our batch of wool out here onto the ground. And then I'm gonna toss this in for good measure. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab those sticks and let's get started. Two thin ones I think will be best. The idea here is to fluff up the wool and to get some of the vegetable matter out and also to get the fibers aligned in such a way that they are easy to spin. Easy so that when you grab one batch of the fiber and start pulling, it then starts automatically bringing the rest along with it. It's already getting some of the vegetable matter out. Wasn't counting on this though. Clearly smoother sticks would be nice. fingernail to get some of those spiky bits off. fluffing everything up. It's a little bit like hitting your pillow repeatedly.
So there's tons and tons of vegetable matter falling out. I'm just worried about reintroducing it. The stringy bits that you see in here that actually look like they were once string were once string. That's from the early part of the learning curve when I was still trying to figure out how to use the spinning wheel. And those just got tossed back in with the assumption that I could turn them back into fiber. And I think I can. We'll see. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is whether this technique of woollying or willowing was used to straighten the fiber and get it ready for spinning, or whether it was just used to clean it out. I mean, it's doing a fairly good job of opening the fiber and getting some of the vegetable matter out. I know that they use this to prepare for spinning in Southeast Asia to prepare cotton. We'll find out if I can make something spinnable with this. So now it's really fluffy. The question is though, can I spin this? As is, maybe. But what I'm gonna to try to do is to flatten it into a bat and then stretch that bat into something resembling sliver. We'll see if it works. This reminds me of my favorite quote that I've ever seen hanging on someone's house, which was that the beatings would continue until morale improved. One of the most wonderfully contradictory things Maybe if I wound it around a distaff, I could just spin it that way and just skip the idea of it being sliver altogether. That would look a little bit more like the drawings in the manuscripts and what I, the footage I see coming out of Romania. So maybe the idea of making a bat was right. So we'll go back and do that. And then I'll just roll up a stick in the middle of it and bind it together loosely and then use that to hold the fiber together for spinning. So for binding it onto the distaff, having never done it before, I'm just going to use some paracord and see if it works. But I'll use about that much. Actually, I'm going to use all of it so I don't have to cut it. That is probably best. And then I'm just going to tie it on like so. I have no idea if this is the way it's supposed to go. This is purely in the spirit of, let's figure something out. Alrighty, here we go. Do I know if it's gonna work? I, I actually, I, I don't know. I give it a 40% chance. So we've got it set up. I, I've wedged the stick here into my spinning wheel and so it's, it's just staying here convenient. That's the idea for a distaff, is you want it to be convenient. Sometimes they'll tuck it in the elbow while using a drop spindle, but this is awesome. Now, I have my doubts, but let's see how well this thing spins. Okay. So I've got it working barely, and not well.
So I'm going to say that this worked as a proof of concept. It can be done. You can prepare wool by bowing. Honestly, it's not that great based off of what I've done so far. The willowing technique works, but it's not ideal. But um, funny enough, this has gotten me thinking about working with raw wool, like just straight off the sheep. Can you do stuff without even processing it at all? And my early experiments have shown that it is indeed possible. Most of the yarn that you see here on this was actually done without any fiber preparation whatsoever. Instead, what I just did was learned how to work with the wool as is. So that will be coming up in a future video, in the very near future, I hope. And uh, I'm gonna have to play with this technique a little bit more to figure out exactly how it works. One thing I think I will do in the future if I try bowing again or willowing or uh, whatever this thing is, is I'll do it within a basket that has a lot of holes in it so that as I hit out the dirt and bits of vegetable matter, they'll fall through the basket, past the wool, all the way to the ground, which from historical uh, documents seems to be something that they have done. In any case, if you enjoy the video and are fascinated with the process of preparing wool and the implications that this had for the Industrial Revolution, then please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time.